Welcome to FPB's Meet the Candidates. This Cable 10 series allows you, the vo voter, excuse me, viewer, to uh, get to know our, our candidates a little more and find out what issues are important <coughs> to them and how they will affect our community. Today's guest is John Sauer, and he is a candidate for the Frankfurt City Commission. Welcome, John. Thank you, Kathy. Glad to be here. Yeah, I thought maybe we'd start off today with you telling us a little bit about yourself. You've been around. Uh -huh. But some people might be new to the community and they don't know who you are. So well, the Sauer family has deep roots in Frankfurt. Uh, we go back to 1868 when my great grandfather came to town. That's not as early as the Crittendons or the Boones, but uh, we came in 1886. Uh, Peter Christian Sauer did with his family. Uh, he went on to have a hardware store and uh, he was uh, on the city council uh, years ago, 1890, I think it was right. Uh, one of his sons was John R. Sauer, and uh, they formed a partnership and uh, developed the Sauer hardware business mm -hmm. on St. Clair Street, right across the street from the courthouse. It was John R. who also served as mayor pro tem for three terms on the city council. He also is responsible for uh, Frankfurt High football field because at that time, Frankfurt High Independent School System was thinking about dropping football altogether because they didn't have a real good place to play. Oh. So uh, grandfather uh, gets uh, credit for that. Uh, my father was mayor uh, from 1968 uh, to 72. Um, I was a mayor from uh, 1980 to 83, uh, but during that earlier period of time, I went to uh, uh, Center College, uh, then I matriculated to uh, Western Kentucky University, and during the summer I would spend uh, at KSU. Uh, while I was spending one of those summer intern jobs with the Department of Commerce, I met my wife, Phyllis. Uh, in 1969, and we were married in 1970, and graduated together uh, in, uh, at uh, Western Kentucky University. My major was business administration with an emphasis on management. And I wanted to do that because I wanted to go into business by myself. Uh, and uh, I came, I graduated from college, I've been uh, an officer or a, 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 in probably a eight or ten different organizations uh, from uh, Boy Scouts to JCs to Community Council to Rotary to uh, I've been involved with the uh, Salvation Army also the Soup Kitchen St. Vincent de Paul Society uh, and I developed uh, my business skills really working at Sour Office Equipment and I am an owner operator for over 30 years of that and uh, now I'm retired. We have three, three boys, and what's even more important is we have two granddaughters and one grandson. Okay, <laughs> that's very important. So um, what are the responsibilities of a city commissioner? Well, that's a good question because uh, a lot of people ask that on the, uh, on the way uh, campaigning. Uh, we're in charge of everything from police to fire to sewer. We have uh, an interest in the Frankfurt Electric and Water Plant Board, of course. Uh, we vote on planning and zoning issues. We create ordinances and so forth to do that. We have a budget that's really important to work with. And um, just about anything that comes down the line, the city of Frankfurt and the city commission is involved with. Okay. Well, that's a lot of responsibility. <laughs> so, uh, in addition to your experience, or you can tell us about your experience, yeah. what characteristics do you think you have that can take on those responsibilities? Well, I think it comes from heritage and growing up in the business, so to speak, uh, with Sauer Office Equipment uh, and working there, my training at uh, Western Kentucky University and life experience. Uh, I've spent eight years, uh, you might say, on the commission in one form or another uh, as mayor for four years and uh, two different term, two year terms as city commissioner. Uh, so that gives me a lot of experience of knowing, you know, where the light switch is and how to turn it on. Uh, and that's important for anyone that's on the city commission. Well, ha you mentioned having been a previous mayor and city commissioner you have the advantage of that experience. Yeah. Um, share with, and, and building a record, share with us uh, some of the uh, accolades, achievements you, 
uh, well, to you during your term? Uh, I really enjoyed it, uh, especially my mayoral term, I guess was perhaps the most significant. Uh, we brought 64 apartments to downtown Frankfurt. We did that because we had some HUD money. Interest rates at that time were sky high. We were able to offer interest rates at 3%, which compared to 1980 when there were 19% was quite a thing to do. And to bring people downtown and uh, occupy those apartments, that was a key to me. Paul Sullivan, a uh, past president of Farmers Bank said, Johnny, as you come in to be mayor, you need to do something to bring more people downtown. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. Another thing we did as mayor, we arrested more people than normal. And what do you know, the crime rate went down. <laughs> Another advantage that we did for businesses was we brought the uh, fire rating from a five down to a three. And then I think it's now a two or maybe even a one. But that saved uh, business people money uh, for uh, fire insurance. Okay. What do you see as the biggest issue facing the, our city? Well, of course, uh, the downtown Frankfurt uh, master plan uh, is the most important thing that's on the agenda right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's part of uh, my personal plan uh, to lead Frankfurt from now on. Uh, number one on that is the convention center. Now right now they're calling it a conference center and I've looked at the schematic of that and it's a little bit too small so I want it larger. I was going to uh, ask you if you'd seen the plan and if you agree yes, with it. Yes, I have it. and it has a lot of good things in it but yeah. the, the conference center is a little bit too small. It needs to seat at least a thousand people. Okay. The reason why is right now our high school graduates and Kentucky State graduates graduates are having to go out of town to graduate where they all graduated in the past uh, convention center, the Farnham Dudgeon Convention Center. And Kentucky State University this past year had to say, well, we're going to make our graduations two different days, A to M this day and, <laughs> and to Z yeah. the next day at yeah. Exum Center because there was no place to hold it completely. Uh, another part of my plan for uh, Frankfurt is development of the riverfront, and I was glad to see that was addressed. Uh, that's where the conference center is. They plan a new hotel there. Uh, they, uh, when I was last city commissioner two years ago, one of the things that I wanted to do and pushed was dockage for Riverview Park. We got two docks. I wanted three. Now the commission agrees and they want four total okay. uh, because we need to have slips for visiting tourists sure. to dock, spend the night in the hotel, mm -hmm. eat some meals downtown, mm -hmm. go to Buffalo Trace and the other stores downtown. And that's a real boon for Frankfurt yes. because right now on a busy weekend, we're having to dock those boats between the head boat of the Frankfurt Boat Club and the riverbank. Mm -hmm. That's not something a capital city ought to aspire to. Yeah. Okay. Well, speaking of the downtown redevelopment plan. Yes. In the future, if it is successful and generates revenue, uh, should local government use that extra money to improve the quality of services or lower taxes yeah. and keep services the same or yeah. something else altogether? Yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a difficult call. Yeah. Uh, we don't know what the revenue is going to be right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I am all for putting every piece of that property in downtown, uh, the plaza development, uh, on the tax rolls because our schools, not just Frankfurt High, you know, uh, the uh, library gets a piece of that. The Franklin County Health Department gets a piece of that. You know, fiscal court gets a piece of that. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's extra revenue. But right now, we don't know how much that's going to be. So I can't give you a real good answer. Yeah. Is that going to raise taxes, lower taxes, or whatever? Yeah. I would hope they would at least stabilize taxes yeah. and not have to have an increase. Yeah. Well, speaking of increases, uh, the Franklin Circuit Court, both school districts, uh, public and independent school districts, and then the city commission soon yeah. are going to be voting to increase the tax rates. Right. Um, 
I'm assuming that has to do with uh, the increasing contributions they're having to make for the pension. Right. And again, we just we have more needs in this community. Right. Right. Um, what do you think? How can the uh, city commission address this as far as bringing in more revenue? Yeah. Well, you're absolutely right. And, and the proposal is 4% increase. Right now, the city uh, spends $4 million on the pension system as it is. Uh -huh. Because of legislation, uh, we're now having to increase that by $500,000. So it's going to be $4.5 million that the city is going to pay out. The 4% increase in taxes that they are planning on would only bring in one, uh, 125000 So that doesn't take the full 500000 that we're going to have to raise. Uh, so we're going to dip into the rainy day fund right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree that we have to have that 4%. I know it's easy for a politician to say, no, no new taxes. But we've got, you know, $500,000 extra that we have to find somewhere. And actually the 4% amounts to 70 cents a month for the average home homeowner of $125,000. Okay. Well, kind of staying in the same vein as far as taxes, and, and you alluded to it earlier, the property taxes. Um, Frankfurt City Schools, they get their revenue, obviously, from the property taxes, and they miss out because they don't get the taxes from state government and their buildings and properties. Right. Is there, is there anything the city commission do, can do to help this situation uh, to generate more revenue for right. them so that they don't have to rely on on fewer, you know, the lower tax, you right. know, right. that come in. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And, and the problem is, you know, uh, there is 70 percent of the downtown property uh, that they would like to raise revenue from is tax exempt because they're a federal state. I mean, well, there is federal, yeah. state, or local government. Yeah. Uh, and so that's why I said right off the bat that every piece of that plaza development for me has to be put on the PVA account yeah. so that we can raise taxes. It would have to be a pri public private partnership. And I understand that, but we need to put all those on the tax rolls so that it will benefit not only the school system, yeah. but the library, city, and the county. Okay. Another exciting thing going on downtown is in the Second Street Corridor. Yeah. Um, they got a, a federal grant for yes. $8 million. Yes. Um, how do you envision the City Commission taking a role in that? Yes. Well, it's right in the city's lap because City Hall is on Second right, Street. Right, exactly. Do you <laughs> and, have specific goals for that project? And I think a lot of it is going to infrastructure. We've got a lot of old sewer lines in mm -hmm. that area. We want to beautify that area and make it more walker friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, those are things that we need to do and make it more attractive to businesses to relocate there. Uh, that's what we want to do. And it's also going to connect, o go over the Capitol Avenue Bridge and connect with East Main, which is another difficult uh, intersection yeah. for the city of Frankfurt. They're going to smooth that out and make it more convenient for people that visit Frankfurt and locals that drive it all the time. Yeah. OK. That sounds good. <laughs> in the primary, a lot of the candidates talked about uh, stagnant population growth here in Frankfurt. Yeah and that we need to do something, there needs to be some kind of change in Frankfurt in order to spur growth. Yes. What do you think that change yes. looks like? Well, I saw the uh, plan again, the downtown master plan, and I agree that we ha have to have more housing units downtown. Uh, you know, look at it this way. Half of Frankfurt's population for state government mm -hmm. comes from surrounding counties or outside Franklin County. I would like to make some of the housing attractive to state employees that are in this new five-story uh, state office building that we're building. There are going to be 1,500 of those there. You've already got 1,100 in the state transportation building. And down the road just a little bit at the old state office building, you've got another another 1,200, I think it is. So if we can model some of those housing units that would be attractive to those who now commute every day, yeah. you know, that seems to me would be a no-brainer. And following along that line, what do you think Frankfurt can do to attract more young people? Yeah. 
well, we have to have more activities downtown. Yeah. That was clear in all those focus sessions that we had. Mm -hmm. The summer concerts are, are nice and wonderful, yeah. but we need to make it more inviting to people uh, to come downtown. The Penske Trail is something that's being worked on with KSU, mm -hmm. and President Brown is all behind that and wants to lead the charge yeah. down Penske Trail when, uh, when that comes about. Another thing to talk about is connectivity. Connectivity is really important to this whole plaza project because we need to extend Washington Street. We need to have trails on both sides of the river. And those trails ought to go, one trail on this side of the river, obviously, needs to go to Buffalo Trace and on to Cove Springs. We need to make it more friendly for people to get around. I favor the two-way two streets, obviously, for Clinton and Miro. The trial run is it works fine right now. It ought to work fine in the future. I was behind two-way long ago for West Main Street. Didn't mm -hmm. quite get the votes. Yeah. Uh, the, <laughs> the, <laughs> the mayor voted against that, and he was the tie-breaking vote. I uh, see. Okay. I'm going to change lanes a little bit here and talk about the Frankfurt Plant Board for a minute. Sure. I know while it would take a, a change in legislation, do you think the county judge and fiscal court should nominate and appoint, appoint any members to the plant board? Well, you're right. It yeah. takes a real change in legislation. Yeah. Uh, now, we, uh, the city commission made an exception to that rule. They read it a little bit differently than most lawyers would, saying that you had to be a city resident. So we now have a county resident mm -hmm. on the plant board, and he's doing a tremendous job. Uh, but I think uh, you still have to get legislation to correct that so that we don't have this problem in the future. And I think a, 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 a plant board member, based on, how, uh, based on percentages, you know, I think the uh, county uh, has 30% perhaps mm -hmm. of the plant board customers. Yeah. So they ought to have 30% of the uh, plant board members. So do you think that's something that instead of the mayor appointing someone that lives in the county, that the county judge should be able to appoint someone uh, from the county. Well, yeah, but it ought to be divided that, like I said, well, yeah. based on percentages. Okay. And I'm afraid, you know, in order to be legal, yeah. it really needs to pass the state legislature. Oh, sure, yeah, it's a legislation change for sure. Sure. Uh, so do you think industry should have a seat on the board? Well, you know, industry consumes 50% of the power of yeah. the plant board, and yeah. yes, I think they ought to have a representative. Okay. Now, that representative can be a county member or a city member, can't they? <laughs> uh, yeah, true, definitely. Um, how do you think the city con commission can incentivize and attract new businesses to our community? Yeah. Well, one thing is, of course, going to be the plaza development. And one thing they mentioned in the uh, downtown master plan was even those apartments that they displayed would have the first floor okay. uh, co uh, commissioned to retail businesses. And whether it's, uh, whether it's a Starbucks or maybe an ice cream shop or a pizza place or someplace like that, maybe a, a hair salon, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, you've got... You know, you've got thousands of state employees that are right across the street from you. Sure, yeah. And so that's one basic way to uh, to bring more people to Frankfurt. Okay. Um, our local economic development group tells us that the availab availability of skilled labor is a major barrier yeah. to yeah. attracting new businesses and new yeah. industry to our community. Yeah. Uh, what can our local government do to help grow our community yeah. in, we, in size and skill? Yeah, we, you know, we've, we've got to make it more attractive to millenniums. I think the Plaza Plan is, uh, is focused on that and will help to do that. I like the initiative of Frankfurt Independent School System and yeah. job training that goes from actual work experience uh, and also in getting a uh, jump on their college education mm -hmm. with their interface with Kentucky State University right now. Okay. Because we need skilled laborers, that's true, and we need uh, to 
produce more high school students that, you know, they can go into the trades instead of go to college. You know, they can go into the armed service and come back a, a, a more mature individual. My youngest son, Will, went, was a Navy veteran for four and a half years. And he was very young when he went in straight out of high school. Yeah. But he came back and, uh, and is now a, a deputy sheriff, as a matter of fact. Okay. Another issue of local businesses is that once they do find skilled workers, right. they can't pass a drug test. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What can local government do to help address this issue? Yeah, well, you know, one of uh, my uh, points on, on my plan is, is to arrest more drug pushers and to do more in the prevention area. Uh, I've teamed up with Ed Council to work with him on his prevention uh, program. Uh, we need more of that uh, in the schools and in the universities. And I think Ed's doing a remarkable job. He has everybody on board mm -hmm. and I support him totally. Oh, good. Uh, do you think the city commission as a public government office is adequately transparent? No, no. And what steps would you take uh, to make it more transparent? Well, you have to have some closed sessions when you're dealing with personnel and when you're dealing with maybe recruiting a new business, but otherwise it ought to be totally transparent. And now we have a, a, a live uh, broadcast, uh, thanks to Cable 10, of both the general meetings and I think you're gonna do the uh, work sessions as well. Okay. And that's a benefit to the uh, citizenry in knowing right away what action is being taken. All I have to do is watch Cable 10 and find out about it. I think we ought to let, one thing we did in the past was we put notices in the newspaper when the meetings were. Mm -hmm. We did that about two days beforehand yeah. so people would have time to get down there and gave them a list of agenda items that we had. I think that would be a good thing because sometimes city does things Physical court does things that you don't know anything about until you see it on TV or right. read about it in the newspaper. Okay. Um, are there any decisions or steps the city commission has taken that you would have done differently if you'd been on? That's a, that's, that's a tough yet an easy one. Okay. <laughs> uh, one of, I've been serving for eight years. Uh -huh. And uh, one of my regrets uh, was... Um, voting uh, for the mayor's nominees uh, four years, three years ago. Uh, and those two nominees have turned out to be the chairman and the vice chairman of the Electric and Water Plant Board. I make a mistake and I, I regret that and uh, I'm sorry for that and apologize. Uh, I should have taken more time to review uh, their resumes uh, now, because of that, the City Commission has a procedure where they're going to question each and every plant board nominee uh, and allow the public to do the same. I made a mistake then and uh, I won't make it again. Okay. Well, as, as you're starting to get out and be among the citizens and meet new people, what are you, you hearing as, as what they feel their biggest issues are? Yeah. And what are your goals um, that you would champion in yeah. your term? Well, you know, I mentioned the convention center. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing uh, that I'm interested in uh, is animal abuse of all kinds. Okay. Uh, Kentucky has uh, strange temperatures. We're real hot, extremes I should call, real, real hot in the summer, it sometimes gets up to 100, and we're real cold in the wintertime. Uh, and it, it sometimes gets down to zero. And for an animal to be outside, if they don't have food, water, and shelter, they're in trouble and they're stressed out. Mm -hmm. So an easy solution there is uh, to post the animal control officer's phone number on the police department's website as well as their Facebook site. 
to take that a step further and go to the veterinarians in town and post it there. You know, you want the telephone number available. Why? Because you're taking your dog, cat, or whatever to the vet, you're thinking about veterinarian services and so forth, and you're thinking about, well, yeah, I know someone where an animal is stressed and, and being abused, I can report it just myself. Doesn't cost much money, but it's just uh, an active thing that uh, we need to do. Going back to the plant board, uh, you know, I want plant board members who are interested in lowering rates. Unfortunately, KU has been the bad guy in, in, in the process. Ever since 2009, KU has increased rates 5%. And the plant board had to pass those increases on to the ratepayers. Now with this consortium of KYMEA, they are reporting for their first, uh, their first uh, council and consultants, I should say, said if we join KYMEA, it will save the ratepayers $8.3 million. Some members of the plant board didn't like that. And they said, well, let's have another consultant's advice. The other consultant was a little more conservative, but sick, and they came back with $6.2 million in savings. You know, I'm a businessman. I vote for the KYMEA consortium, <laughs> not for somebody that just wants to break it up like uh, okay. certain members do. Okay, well, I think we're getting ready to wrap up here, so I wanna give you the opportunity to look in the camera and speak directly to our viewers and, and tell them why you're the best candidate in this race and why they should vote for you. Well. First of all, thank you. Sure. Thank you to Cable 10 uh -huh. for presenting this program for all the candidates to go through. And uh, I think in this race, uh, for me, I think, it ma I think education matters. I think experience matters. I have a degree in business administration with an emphasis on management. I have experience of four year, uh, I'm sorry, eight years with the city commission. Four as your mayor and two different terms as city commissioner. Those things are important, I think, in the person you vote for. You know, would you let your 15-year-old child uh, drive your car? No, you'd want them to go through driver's training or driver's education first and be an experienced driver before you put them behind the wheel. I'm an experienced driver. I know where the light switches are in City Hall and I know, know how to turn them on. Our election is November the 6th. I'm asking for your vote, and I appreciate your consideration. Thank you so much, John. Now, if somebody has more questions of you, how can they reach you? They're with your email address? You'll see this little uh, postcard or uh, rec card on your door or handed uh, by me uh, personally. Uh, and it has my telephone number on it as well as my email address. My telephone number is 502-330-2964. My email address is jsower4739 at aol.com. I welcome your comments, negative or positive, but I'd like there to, those responses to be, how can we best move Frankfurt forward? I welcome your response. Well, thank you so much for coming by. I know that our viewers appreciate hearing from you. It's John Sauer. He is a candidate for Frankfurt City Commission. I want to remind viewers to get out and vote on Election Day, Tuesday, November 6th. And when you're done voting, go home and, and check us out on Channel 10. We'll be having live election coverage uh, straight from the county clerk's office. It's election season, so it's time to get invo informed and you get out and voice your choice. And we'll see you next time on Meet the Candidate.